In this section, we'll discuss the semi-conservative mode of DNA replication. So DNA replication, the entire process we have already understood. Now we are talking about that DNA replication is semi-conservative. Conservative term tells us that it is something to do with the old things and semi means partly. So DNA replication retains or the new DNA strand which is formed retains a part of the old strand that is one part and one is synthesized newly. If it was completely old thing we would have considered it as conservative. If it was completely new thing maybe we, we would have used the term modern and as there are 50-50 things, 50% old, 50% new, we are calling it semi-conservative mode of replication. The experiment which was done to prove this semi-conservative mode was by Messerson and Stahl. Messerson and Stahl. They proved that the DNA replication takes place in this particular manner that is semi-conservative. What they did, they used heavy nitrogen and in this heavy nitrogen containing medium, they allowed bacteria E. coli to replicate. Heavy nitrogen that is N15 was used and it was provided in the form of NH4Cl that is, that is ammonium chloride which was the source of nitrogen. This heavy nitrogen was used in a medium where E. coli were allowed to divide. So when for many generations only N15 was given, the complete DNA which was there in the new E. coli was containing this heavy nitrogen. It is not radioactive, it is heavy. That means if we have to separate it from the normal nitrogen, that is N14, we will have to use density gradient. They also separated the heavy nitrogen containing DNA from the normal nitrogen, that is N14, using density gradient. And this gra density gradient was a cesium chloride density gradient. To understand this, what is happening is, say we start with the DNA of E. coli, which is having heavy nitrogen. So here also there is N15 and this also has N15. In optimum conditions, we know that these bacteria multiply every 20 minutes. So after 20 minutes, if this DNA is analyzed, in the medium containing normal nitrogen now. So the original DNA or the bacterium which was taken was with both the strands of DNA with heavy nitrogen. And now they were allowed to multiply in a medium containing normal nitrogen that is N14. Again it was provided in the form of NH4Cl. Only thing is the nitrogen was normal nitrogen. This DNA would multiply, replicate and when this DNA replicates, the two strands would separate and a new strand will be synthesized. The new strand, let me write it as N15, N15 that means this is the parent strand we are talking of. The new DNA strand which is synthesized. Now for this new, new DNA strand to be synthesized, the nitrogen which is required is N14. So this will have N14. Same thing is going to be here. N14. If this, these bacteria are allowed to multiply one more time, that means again 20 minutes time and same NH4Cl with normal nitrogen that is 14 what will happen in this case these two will separate that means n15 containing 
which is coming from the original parent bacteria and the red one which is the newly synthesized one that is L14. On these two, we have just separated this two and then we will redo this one. The new DNA which is going to be synthesized here is going to have N14 because that is the only nitrogen which is available and here also it is going to be N14 that is the lighter nitrogen. Same thing is going to happen with this strand also. When they separate the red one having N14 and the blue one having that is the parent original parent strand having N15 and on these both these parent strands the new DNA which is synthesized is N14 and N14. Now if these are separated on density gradient that is what Meselson and Stahel did they separated them using density gradient. So if we make a test tube showing this density gradient we would find this type of DNA separated at the bottom. So this is the heavy DNA because it was having both the strands of DNA containing heavy nitrogen. When these DNAs were separated using this density gradient that is cesium chloride density gradient. This strand has one heavy nitrogen containing DNA other is lighter. So the DNA got separated not at the bottom because they were not heavy. This was the hybrid and when the same thing was done third time then we got a different band. And on the density gradient, the bands were of hybrid. This was the hybrid strand with 15 and 14. This one was also, sorry, I wrote this as it should have been 50. So this is hybrid. This is also hybrid. And these new strands, they have 14, 14. So, there were two bands obtained, one band at the hybrid level and the other band at the lighter level because originally both the strands had heavy nitrogen so it was the DNA got separated at the bottom so we consider it as heavy strands. Here one strand was having heavy nitrogen, other was having lighter nitrogen so the band was in the middle. Here few strands are heavier one strand that is nitrogen, other strand is 14. So they are in the hybrid band. And some DNAs are having both the strands having 14, 14. So this was the hybrid and this was the lighter. So on the basis of density gradient, first time heavy, second time both the strands were hybrid. And the reason why they were hybrid because from the parent, they received one strand, half, and the new strand was synthesized. So they retained 50% of the old and 50% was new. That is why it was called semi-conservative. When these two separated, this becomes the parent strand for the new. So the new DNAs which are formed get one blue that is from the parent and one red which is from the parent and they synthesize one strand new. So again, semi-conservative. So this was the experiment which was done by Messelson and Stahl, which proves the semi-conservative DNA replication. A similar experiment was done by Taylor. Taylor did the same experiment to prove the semi-conservative replication of DNA and chromosomes. And the experiment was done in the root tip cells, root tip cells of Wikia faba. That is the name of the plant. Its root cells were taken and that is where he studied the DNA chromosomal replication and he found that to be semi-conservative. 
The thing that he used here, Messelson and Stahl used heavy nitrogen. He used thiamide with heavy hydrogen to understand this semi-conservative mode of replication. So, Messelson and Stahl explained DNA's replication and Taylor's experiment was for DNA as well as chromosomal replications and both are found to be semi-conservative.